All right, we're on page 56 of Unit 8, Aseptic Technique in Clean Rooms. In aseptic manufacturing, you first sterilize everything you work with. Then you observe aseptic technique to prevent bringing contamination into the environment. In the previous section, you learn how to destroy contamination by sterilizing and disinfecting your equipment and materials. In this section, we're going to learn about aseptic technique, which are procedures that we need to prevent contamination, as well as clean rooms, which are areas where a lot of these procedures occur. Clean rooms are aseptic controlled environments. They have a controlled flow of filtered air. They have a controlled access. And then the cleanliness is maintained to a specified standard. Um, a clean room should have be completely enclosed, generally no windows. The surfaces should be easily to clean. Um, so like if you look in the classroom, we probably have a drop ceiling uh, with those tiles that give off pieces if you just shake them. That would not be a good thing in a clean room. Uh, if you look at the walls, you look at the, the baseboard, the crown, any crown molding, anything like that, none of that would be any good in a clean room. You want um, edges and corners that can be easily cleaned. You want to have controlled access. You don't want people just in and out of this room like it's a public bathroom. Uh, it's not going to stay sterile that way. You want to establish a regular disinfection schedule. There's usually certain things that are cleaned daily, certain things that are cleaned weekly, certain things that are cleaned monthly. You make workers follow the gown and personal hygiene if they go into these rooms. Control materials coming into the room. They should be sterile or at least cleaned to a specified standard. You should work with materials so as to prevent spills and aerosols. And you may um, come up with some other ideas as well. On page 58, in a clean room, air must be filtered and must flow smoothly downward to prevent air currents from carrying particles. As shown in the figure um, in your book, do we have that picture? We do. Here we go. Um, Airflow should be laminar, which is smooth, as opposed to turbulent, which is agitated and uneven. Think of a river with rocky banks. The flow in the deep channel in the middle of the river is laminar. Laminar means just even, uninterrupted. The flow near the shore is turbulent because the rocks disturb the water. The water hits against the rocks. It gets foamy. It gets turbulent. It gets choppy. That's not laminar flow. We don't want air flowing through the surface like that water flowing in the river. We want it to be like in the middle of the river where it's flowing evenly. You can see this as well with candles and um it says another example of laminar flow is smoke rising in a steady column in still air. Um, airflow is controlled in a clean room by air pressure. Air pressure is always going to be higher in the clean room than it is in other surrounding rooms. The reason for that is that air pressure always pushes things from high to low. So you want to push particles out of a clean room, not into a clean room. Um, aseptic areas are arranged so that the cleanest rooms are at the core. The core is where the most of the air particles go. So if we jump ahead here, uh, you will see that as we go into the interior, uh, that we actually end up with the cleanest areas here in this middle area and not so clean out here. Okay. Um, page 59, all surfaces must be frequently cleaned and disinfected. They are designed so they do not shed particles. They can be easily cleaned. They resist the corrosive effects of chemical disinfectants. Clean rooms also designed without crevices and cracks that can trap dust and microbes. Access. The fewer people in a clean room, the better. Because people are the major source of contamination in a controlled environment, too much traffic interrupts the laminar airflow. Access to a clean room is strictly controlled, limited to personnel that are qualified and needed to carry out a particular task. Personnel who are authorized to work in a clean room must enter through an ante room where they have to scrub up and put on sterile garments and walk over tacky baths. In addition to these steps, personnel may pass through an airlock. It's a small vestibule where the inner door to the clean room cannot be opened until the outer door is closed. An airlock creates an additional barrier between the dirty world outside and the clean room, and it maintains the air pressure difference. Equipment and materials are limited only to those necessary for a task. There are special ways they get added in. Page 60. Different types and parts of aseptic manufacturing require different levels of cleanliness. The cleanliness of a room 
let's read this paragraph, read this sentence. The cleanliness of a room is based on the concentration and the size of the particles that are allowed. Not denied access, but are allowed. In clean rooms, particle detectors count particles of different size and monitor the cleanliness of the air. Particles counted can include bits of skin, hair or dust, fibers of cloth, minute grains of sand, tiny food particles, aerosols, large molecules, and microbes. Once again, clean rooms are classified by the maximum particle concentration. Allowed. For example, in the older U.S. system, which we will use on this test, a class 100 means that it will allow 100 particles, not 101, 99 is okay, but 100 is the maximum number of particles of 0.5 micrometers or larger per cubic foot of air. The newer U.S. standard and international ISO system are listed in your book, but very, very important. Down here, as they say, the lower the number, the cleaner the room. The lower the number, the cleaner the room. Very, very important that you understand that for your test. Please know that for your test. On page 61, they ask a few questions. In a class 100 environment, can there be bacteria in the air? Even though they're larger than a half micron, there could be a few because class 100 does allow up to 100 particles per cubic foot of air. Could there be any viruses in the air? Sure, viruses are teeny tiny and small. If huge things like bacteria can be allowed, then viruses definitely would be allowed. Now, are they desired? Not at all, but they would not be as detected as because they're smaller. In a class 100,000 environment, they want to know how many colonies could there be on a nutrient agar plate left open on a bench for four hours in a class 8 ISO clean room. And the answer to that is 50 or fewer because that's what the standard for that classification is on the previous page. And how many colonies did you observe with your air sampling plate? Uh, that depends on the lab that we did earlier. Okay, so over on page 62, we're talking about clean workstations. I want to make this quick and short. Um, but I do want to make sure you understand the importance here. Uh, clean workstations are usually enclosed workbenches. They're called laminar flow hoods or cubicles partitioned off with plastic curtains. At these workstations, materials are protected from contamination by filtered laminar airflow. The workstations have their own HEPA filters. They're kind of like miniature clean rooms. For example, you may see class 100 hoods or cubicles within class 10,000 clean rooms. The figures that follow show cutaway views of two types of laminar flow hoods, horizontal and vertical. Horizontal flow hood, the air gets filtered in, it blows back. Notice there's no sash here, no window. Uh, this is intended to protect the material, not the person. Notice you're not going to be blowing any material onto the stuff you're working with. Instead, anything that could blow off of the material you're working with will blow back on you. Okay, they're drawn in by a fan at the top of the hood, they're pulled through filters, and they blow horizontally across the front. Okay, HEPA filter again, high efficiency particle, I forget exactly, we're just talking about HEPA and what HEPA meant. Uh, high efficiency particulate air filter. Okay, a vertical front laminar hoods are a little more complicated. Notice there is a sash in front, um, this is intended to protect the um, worker and not so much the uh, material. You still want to protect the material though. So we do pull it down through um, air filters. Uh, the, air, the HEPA filters are up here at the top. Uh, so we do have HEPA filters before air is exited and before air comes back down. And in this case it's vertical flow so it flows down vertically behind the sash um, and down through filters and air is drawn in underneath the sash where the, um, where the um, person is working. You do need to know the big differences between both of these horizontal and vertical laminar hoods. Um, it is very, very important that you know both of these. On page 64, examples of clean rooms. Um, you've learned different clean rooms are required for different kinds of work. You've also learned the cleaner the space, the lower the number of the clean room classification.
I'm not going to read through all the descriptions on page 64 and 65, so please make sure that you read through those. Uh, there will be an activity that you'll be doing in the Moodle site. Um, page 67 um, describes the picture that you're seeing here, and it's on page 66. Uh, basically, you come in. So let's actually draw this here. So you clean into the gallon room, and you would put your stuff in the lockers, and then you come over to the benches. And on the benches, you actually have a dirty side, and you have a clean side. So you start to change your outfits, and you come over to the clean side. And then once you're completely over on the clean side, then you go through an airlock, and you enter into a Class 100,000 clean room. Now, depending on what you need to do, you can come over here, and you can work materials. You can help pass stuff through this hole. You yourself will not go through the hole. Materials will pass through the hole. Um, or, depending on if you need to get into this inner area to work, you would come on in here. You would, again, wash your hands. You would apply sanitizers. You would have more lock. You put your stuff in the lockers or get stuff out of lockers. Come over here to the benches. Again, there's a dirty side and a clean side. And you would um, put on more booties and things like that that you need. Get yourself even more dressed up. And then you could come through another airlock into the class 100, class 10,000 clean room. So a smaller number, cleaner atmosphere. Class 10,000, inside the class 10,000, there's a hood. So maybe you would come over here and sit down at the hood. And you could do some work under the hood. Um, and that would be under a class 100 hood in this particular case. And then once you're done with your work, you would be able to come out. The problem with these things is um, even though you see sinks and stuff like that, there's no bathroom. Um, so you have to come out of all of this to go to the bathroom. And then to go back in, you have to go through it all again. So uh, you definitely want to be very careful in taking your time. And make sure that even if you ain't got to pee, that you pee before you go in. We're going to stop there so we can talk about aseptic technique in the next video.